live. Super exciting. So glad to have you guys back. And I know y'all have been up to, sorry, my voice on my phone was going off at the same time. And I was like, oh Lord, what did we do now? Anyway, but I'm, I'm so glad. I know that you guys have been doing a lot in Navasota, so I can't wait to hear more about what both of you guys are doing. Uh, but just a quick update before we get into the um, artists and residents in Navasota. We have a few other ones as well. So our College Station Artists and Residents program starts in June. And then our Bryan artists and uh, residents, the applications are opened in 2022. So be on the lookout for that. But let's get into uh, Lisa Nelson, who is an artist in residence in Navasota. And just in case somebody hasn't checked us out in the last uh, episode or so, give us a little bit of a background about who you are and why you decide to come to Navasota. Of course, my name is Lisa Nelson. I'm from Massachusetts, uh, not too far outside of Boston. Um, I did go to art school many, many decades ago, but then got back into art in the last couple of years. And I heard about the Navasota Artists in Residence and it sounded like a great, unique opportunity. So I was so excited when I got it because it's this beautiful, beautiful artsy town. And then it's a old Victorian house and it's just a unique artist in residency program. Um, and I am obsessed with maps. So I'm all about maps, which I am very excited to talk about my obsession with maps and how it leaks into my artwork. Well, let's check out your first piece. Wonderful. So I love, um, I'm very interested in how um, a lot of New England towns all get their names from English um, towns. So I did a series where I, um, would do the New England town and then the England town. So this one is called Yarmouth to Yarmouth and it includes Yarmouth on Cape Cod in Massachusetts and then Great Yarmouth, its namesake back in England, uh, which is also a coastal town. So I kind of like how they're both um, got these craggy coasts and then how they kind of come together in this interesting collage of maps. Wow. And so this, this one and this one go together though, right? Yeah. So they're both from the same series. Um, they're both from a show um, in Cape Cod um, called, Yarm and they're both uh, part of that, the Yarmouth to Yarmouth. This one's called Competing Coastlines because uh, I put, put the coastlines right across from each other. Um, and I just love kind of the interplay and the relationship of, you know, these two, the, the town and its namesake. Uh, I thought it was very interesting. And I love, I love like drawing and painting all of the craggly coasts where the little river inlets are. And it just, that kind of stuff just is riveting to me. I love the colors. I bet these both side by side look pretty cool. Yes. And they are displayed together in the Horlock house side by side. I love it. And they will have to come check it out. And your hours are open between uh, what days and times? So Thursdays, Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays, 12 to 5. Plenty of time to come check these out. And by appointment as well. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That'd probably be way more interesting to come in appointment with you two. Absolutely. Certainly. I think happy, so. you know, happy to tell, tell them all about our art and about the house. Yeah, uh, this is my piece. Air to Boston. Um, and this, um, I come from a little town, um, roughly about the same size as Navasota called Air. Mm -hmm. Never heard of the town until I met someone who lived there. Um, and then it was this one. So Air is at the top. And so Air is very much about trying to build up its downtown and trying to be as city-like as possible. And then Boston is on the bottom. And the thing that Boston is well known for is its public gardens and its common. So you've got this big city or what I consider a big city. Granted, it's not a big city by Houston standards, but um, it's known for its parks. And so like one is the city trying to be like the country and the other one is the country trying to be like the city. And then I just, I like the composition, particularly the blue and the green together. Oh yeah, I like that. You even got some yellow and stuff in there. Yeah, yeah. I like, I like kind of just, uh, yeah, having seen how the colors kind of mix together and what colors you get. And these are watercolors, right? Yeah, I just do watercolors. So I'm all about the watercolors because 
you can never uh, predict how they're going to turn out. And that's what I love about them. They are a little wild sometimes, huh? They are. They do get out of control. <laughs> like my hair. <laughs> and my hair too. I love those curly haired kids. Love it. Love it. Yes. Now here we have some more frogs. Yes. Yep. Sorry. If you're looking at my artwork, you're going to be looking at frogs eventually. Uh, so this is Hondorian brook frog, uh, which is sadly a frog that is now in stick, extinct. Uh, but there were beautiful frogs with these bright, bright eyes. Um, and I wanted to pay tribute to them in my artwork because they just were such unique little creatures. Uh, but yeah, sadly, no one has seen one since the 80s. So I wanted to call attention to them, show their beauty, kind of show where they're from, and then also kind of uh, remind people of the plight of, you know, we need to do whatever we can to try to keep all the animals that are currently here because uh, they're all unique and beautiful. Yeah. Well, and I don't, well, I think you mentioned this the last time we had a Facebook Live, but you also mentioned that um, the frogs are kind of, or like the, the animals in the ecosystem are also part of the landscape and therefore yes. they're kind of an integral part of mapping and yes. and things like that. So I thought that was also an interesting comparison um, of putting animals in the artwork or layering them over maps. I thought that was a really clever artistic choice. Thank you. Yeah, yeah they're definitely a part of the, they're, they're an important part of mapping in the world. And I, I like to give them prominent placement. Oh, I, I love it. Very nice. Thanks for adding that. Thank you. Yeah. And this is the Eastern Mud Salamander. Uh, this Ooh. was part of a series I did on the Pine Barrens in New Jersey uh, for an exhibit there. Uh, and they're just, uh, they're just, I just love them. They're just happy little salamanders and they're so cute. To me, they're cute. <laughs> and <laughs> this is a map of like a, a field study in, uh, in the Pine Barrens. So them kind of in their natural habitat and I just, I love uh, mapping out rivers and then, yeah, I love how the salamanders kind of fade into the background, but also pop out as well. Well, you definitely drew them very, so. Thank you. And happy. And they're very happy yeah. looking creatures. Indeed. They actually mm -hmm. smell like that, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah. I'm always happy. Yeah. I'm always happy when I find uh, salamanders. Do you know what a large group of salamanders is called? That what? A congress. Ooh! <laughs> salamanders. That's your, that's your fun science fact for the day. I love it. I wonder how they came up with that. I don't know why. I don't know. I've had, I've seen them in groups. You know, when you clean out your swimming pool, you'll find a big group of them that you have to. No, you'll find a Congress. Oh, them. you'll find a Congress. You'll find yeah. a Congress. Clean yes. your pool and you'll find a Congress. Yeah, I you like probably it. don't want to have yeah, let's, we'll not follow that. Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 no. Uh -uh. Very, very nicely done. And, and yeah. before, before we move on to Sasha, y'all, y'all are also going to be out at a, an event. When is, when yes. is that? So this Saturday, I'm going to be at the Washington on the Brazos holiday market from 10 to two, come on by. I'll have some of my artwork, some of Saskia's, please come and say hello. I'd be love to see whoever can come out. There'll be holiday cards, gift tags. So definitely some yes. things for the holidays and a lovely reminder to people to shop local. Yes. Um, one of the best things you can do for the arts is to um, buy the art around you, not the art in stores. It's um, you're helping support the artists and helping them pay for things like bills and groceries and just their life. So shop local, come to the, come to the Christmas market on the Washington on the Brazos. And it keeps funds local too. When people are shop local, it keeps everything local, which is it does. Which is really Agreed, nice. does. Which speaking of which, you guys had huge success this weekend at uh, the festival there in Navasota. So, um, sounded like it was a great time. We did Navasota people do shop local, um, which was awesome. We were at the farmers market on Saturday, and then we were also at the Red Wheats and Blues Festival um, Saturday as well. Um, and we were able to sell quite a bit of artwork. And, yeah. Um, you know, honestly, we're just really thankful that the community came out and supported us as, uh, yeah, as much as they could. So 
And I bet y'all met some fantastic people because there's some great people in that Minnesota. We did. We did. We did. We met all sorts of people. We got invited to dinners and other yeah. things. Like it was, yes! it was a good day. I yeah, love that. That's my favorite part right there. Invited to yeah. dinners. That, I love that. That is super awesome. I guess they like us. Yeah. Yay. <laughs> well, y'all are super fun. So I can easily see why. I, I absolutely you. love that. Oh my gosh. So it's uh, thank you, Lisa, for giving us some insight in what you've been up to. So, Saskia, will you give us a little bit of information about you and who you are and why you chose the Navasota Artist in Residence Program? Yeah, so uh, my name is Saskia. I am an artist originally from Fort Collins, Colorado. Um, I got my Bachelor of Fine Arts at Colorado State University. Um, and I was looking for an opportunity to come um, just have the time, space, uh, and support to make some art and build up my portfolio. And I found the Navasota Artist in Residence program. Um, and it really stood out to me because you get to live in this historic house. Um, it was a little bit longer than some of the other residencies. And I had seen that in the past, you guys have brought on some really unique and diverse artists. So um, those are some of the reasons why I chose to apply. And uh, I'm really grateful that I was uh, taken in. Well, I'm super excited to have both of y'all. Y'all are working very well together. Thank you. Yeah. So tell me what you got going on in here. Certainly. So some of these, this image and a lot of the next images are works in progress in the studio right now. Um, so you might know some of them are possibly a little bit rougher. There's definitely some things still being worked out. And um, I really wanted to share that because I do have a large process when it comes to making paintings and different works in my studio. So what you're that is a little diorama that I had, I had set up to um, uh, kind of understand how I wanted to make my painting. <laughs> so I had made all these little things. I found all these plants outside in the garden and I had taken them in and um, kind of set them up in this little diorama to figure out how I was going to make the painting. Um, so this particular photograph um, is based on a couple of different dreams and I was trying to kind of um, I had a couple of different dreams in mind. All of my work is based on dreams. And um, mm -hmm. I was trying to find a way to kind of combine the dreams and kind of stitch them together to create some sort of new, some sort of new narrative that could still kind of reflect a little bit on the dream equality, but kind of maybe possibly present a new story to my, um, my audience. Um, so it's a little bit harder to tell in this photograph, and I think it might be a little bit easier to see in the painting later on, but, um, so what you've got is a, it's like a tent with some lawn chairs. <laughs> uh, I had spent some, some extra time trying to pick out those lawn chairs on Google. Um, and then <laughs> inside of the tent is a, it's a tiger skin rug that I had painstakingly made with, um, velvet and acrylic paint. Um, it's pretty flat right now, so I don't know if you can see it in the image, but, um, so I had put these things together. I was trying to make some sort of, um, scene and I almost, I've been lovingly referring to this photograph as, um, the man cave. <laughs> um, that's just what made, like, it made me think of it as like, you know, this, this little hideout oh spot, maybe almost like, you know, some sort of like, uh, it's just family Robinson. It does. Sort it of, like the sort man of came thing. on an alien planet. <laughs> yeah. That's what it looks um, like. Yeah. And I had found these awesome purple plants outside in our yard. And I just thought they looked, I thought they looked like they were from another planet. Um, so I had uh, brought them in and found some other leaves and things around the yard um, and uh, just kind of started setting them up. Um, I think the, the tree looking thing in the corner maybe is a magnolia seed pod. I'm not sure. It looks like that. it. Yeah, I think it is. I, we don't have this kind of stuff in Colorado though. It's, so I was like, as, as an outsider, I was just fascinated by all these different things. And so I started bringing them into the work because um, even though the, the dreams that I'm basing the work on is not from Navasota, I still wanted a little bit of Navasota to kind of work its way into the painting without it being too obvious, I guess. Um, so I'd started just trying to find things that really caught my attention and uh, this is where it went. So this is a reference photograph for the painting as a, a short answer. <laughs> well, it's, it's like, say you're from Navasota, but not say it. So I love it. Thank you. It works. Yeah, it's, it's very interesting watching her process and watching her build these. 
and then painstakingly paint the little tiger tiger rug. It's it's always there's always something interesting going on in the studio. It's a lot of fun to look at the stuff. That's funny oh, yeah. too because the things I spend the most time on usually don't make their way into the painting, but they're still part of the process. It's still part you, of the process. So, so it's, it's fascinating. So when you get that one done, we'll have to do a side by side of your painting Absolutely. and and what you created yeah. to make that. That'll be super fun. Oh, definitely. Um, yeah, there's a couple of in progress paintings. They're further down in the slideshow, but um, uh, you can kind of see the similarities. But this is another photo that I use to um, kind of just understand how I'm going to work things out in the painting. So in this one, I'm still using some of the same plants that I was using for um, that previous photograph. Um, and in this one, I was kind of setting up this image of like these wolves hunting these chickens. And from this one, it was also based on dreams, but I really started to get this um, like little red riding hood sort of <laughs> vibe coming from it. And I was like, all right, let's roll with it. Like, let's see where it can go. I think, um, I think this one also tells an interesting story um, while still trying to stay a little bit dreamy. Mm -hmm. um, and I really enjoyed the shadows in this one, especially the shadows that are coming off of the plants and um, the wolves as well. I thought it was ominous and creepy. And um, I was like, all right, let's 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 roll with it. Your fence is also great, including the shadows off of that fence. That fence took a very long time to make. It was worth it. <laughs> It's so worth oh it. I was God. outside collecting sticks like a weird person, like in the street, <laughs> grabbing sticks and things and bringing them into the house. I'm sure our neighbors were thrilled about that. <laughs> but <laughs> they're, they're, art. Art. they're, they're probably art. like, oh, look at those artists. They're having a good old time. Well, I guess yeah. I'll see what they did later. <laughs> I'm sure they did that a lot. <laughs> oh my gosh. Very interesting. So this is, this is one of the paintings that I'm doing and you can kind of see some similarities between the photographs and the painting. Um, so this is in, um, we're in the beginning stages right now. Um, you can still see some of the underpainting. Um, and I was using a, it was a turquoise oil pastel to draw a lot of these things in. So it's, it created this really bright green underpainting on the painting. And I, I really liked the colors and I thought that they were, um, you know, it's not what you would see if you were outside. It, it's something you might see in a dream though. So um, this one is about, we'll say it's about 30% done. So I'm excited to see where it goes. And uh, this one and one of the other ones that we'll look at in a minute, they'll both be up um, in our final show that starts on February 3rd. Um, so Lisa and I right now are both, we're making work that'll go into that show and then we'll have all of our fresh work from the residency up by that time. Mm -hmm. We're looking and forward I, to it. I, I do like the shadow. So these are, are wolves, kind of like your wolves, the shadows here. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Oh, I like it. I like it. So thank we'll you. See the final piece uh, up in February. Yes, that, you that'll will. be here before you know it. That's super. Oh, exciting. we know. <laughs> <laughs> super exciting. I love it. It's awesome. the days are flying by. And then this is the other one. Um, you can see the uh, well, in this one, it's actually a wolf skin rug, but um, you can see a little bit, a little bit better underneath the tent. Um, and then um, yeah, this one's a little bit more closely related to that first photograph, so you can kind of see how I was using the photograph to make the painting. Yeah. Um, I did, you know, use my artistic, um, I made some other artistic choices in the painting to try and um, make the painting look a little different, but um, this one is starting to get completed. Um, there's some other things that will get painted over and maybe some colors will change, but it's, um, this one's probably about 60 to 70% done. Um, so it's getting there. And I like the background. That you Thank have. you. It's, uh, it's my favorite part of the painting right now. So I appreciate it. I definitely see, you know, a dream coming in there. Definitely. But how you got a man cave out of your dream <laughs> is uh, that's the story I want to hear about. <laughs> well, you know, it's, it's interesting because um, the dream was about something completely different, but I think I was able to use that dream to inspire me to create something new. Um, I think in the dream itself, I was just standing in a green tent, um, 
and it was really big and that was it that was the dream that's all I remember that's there interesting you wake up and you're like how can I turn this into an amazing painting well and you know there's some things yeah. there's some things in dream too like you know it's not particularly interesting or maybe there's not a lot going on but visually it might be really fascinating um where there might be you know there's symbols and dreams that show up like like a tent or wolves or something that's um that will catch my attention I'm like oh that's that's actually a great symbol to use for trying to communicate something else or that's that was a really clever motif to use in a dream that could easily be used in a painting to communicate some other thing um, and I'm always trying to ask myself, like, what is the art communicating and how is it doing it and how effective is it? And I think symbolism is a great way to do that. And in that way, it's really helpful to listen to dreams um, and see what they have to say, because they are always communicating through symbols and metaphors and motifs and things like that. Oh, I love it. Very nice. Man cave out of a dream. I love it. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I love it. And then this is the, the one we were already talked about that's this one right over here, right? Yep. So it's a little bit more closely related to the photograph. Um, and it's um, it's all done in graphite. It's on, I think it's an 18 by 24 sheet of paper. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I'd agree. Yeah. Um, but it was to kind of help me understand how to do the painting. But I do like the drawing on its own. I'd say it's about 90% done. So it's still got a few kinks and things here and there to work out but um it was really helpful exercise in trying to understand how i wanted to go about it in my final piece and how i wanted to change some things and like where where i wanted to put certain objects versus others and um kind of just good practice to get things going compositionally and structurally um so i wanted to add this one in here because i think it's a helpful I think sometimes it can be helpful for people to see what's behind the curtain um, mm -hmm. when you're making the art. So this is a part of it. Um, drawing is definitely a big part of painting. And without drawing, painting is not, um, the painting does not come through as well, I think. But I, I like how you use the shadows because you can definitely tell like there's danger on the other side of that, that fence. So the fence, okay. I know it took you a lot of time, but it's definitely paying off in the in the photo thank from the you. photo thank to the you. painting yeah wow hey, you gotta have a solid drawing underneath your painting you do That's the way it is you do and yep. i've done it before where i i did not take the time to um um do the do the drawing correctly or you know i didn't take the time to do it right at first and um i i've dearly paid for that later um with trying to fix things that should have been fixed a while ago so um, even though it can take a while, it's, it's good to flush it out in the beginning. Yeah. I love it. I love it. Well, I'm super excited. Um, but before we go into a lot of stuff that's happening at the Arts Council, let's just recap that you guys are going to be where this weekend? We're going to be at the Washington on the Brazos the holiday market from 10 to 2. Uh, and that's on Saturday. And then the Horlock House is open. Thursday, Friday, Saturdays, and Sundays, 12 to 5. And then actually, we just uh, put our artwork up in the lobby of the Navasota City Hall. Uh, so anytime someone's downtown, they want to see more of our artwork, just pop on in. It's in the lobby. And that just opened today. Yeah. And in and the City Hall gallery, there are some smaller, more affordable works there as well. Um, so it's a great spot to get a little gift for someone. The holidays are coming up. So. They are definitely coming up. And then also like save the date. So you guys have your opening um, reception for your gallery in February. So be on the lookout for, for that as well. That is awesome. all new works there. So we're really excited for that. Um, we're working really hard to make that happen and make it just the best it can be um, now until February. So indeed, we're, we're looking forward to it. Yes. And they could keep seeing like a preview kind of if, if they join our little talks on Mondays, uh, every other Monday or whenever we've got it scheduled, then they can kind of get some sneak previews of what you guys are working on, which is, I think it's kind of cool. Oh, definitely. Yeah. So some things that are happening at the Arts Council, you can become a member. We've got all kinds of different memberships and uh, for anyone from business to individuals 
to um, affiliates, to our artists, to our restaurants, to our hotels. Super exciting. So check it out at acbb.org. Um, we also have an exciting uh, customized party happening at uh, Kendra Scott this Thursday from 530 to 7. So come check it out. Come get some Christmas gifts and part of those proceeds come back to the Arts Council to help with their programming. And then uh, we also have some exciting things happening here at the Arts Council. So we have ornament decorating um, every Saturday from 1 to 4 here at the Arts Council until um, the first weekend in December. Then we have a couple of art uh, classes happening, one on December 4th and one on December 11th. And then we have our community art day, um, the holiday edition, we are teaming up with nothing but cake. So you can decorate a bunt cake for Santa. So super exciting to see how the kids are gonna decorate their cakes for Santa using all kinds of cool art to do that with. And then we have, Jason, Jason in our main our main lobby until December 23rd. So that's coming to an end. So uh, come out and check out his amazing work. And then a huge thank you to both Saskia and Lisa for joining us today to give us an insight in what's happening in the Navasota Artists and Residents. And of course, we couldn't do what we do without the City of Navasota, City of College Station, and the City of Bryan with all their support. So thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, sounds like an amazing community there in Navasota that has welcomed you guys. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much to the, to, the, to the city of Navasota, as well as to College Station and Brian. Uh, it really means a lot to us to have us here, and uh, we couldn't have been here otherwise. So we really, really appreciate it. Yeah, you all are what makes it what it is, and it's been pretty great so far. Well, we've got some amazing people that like you that take advantage of it. So thank you. Thank you for coming. So uh, be sure to check us out next month as we get caught up with these two lovely ladies to see what they've got going on. Until then, all of our information is on our website at acbb.org. Thanks and see you soon. Thank you. Thank you.